Welcome everyone to War Thunder Histories episode 4. Today we're going to be talking about America's first true main battle tank, the M60 Patton. As always, we'll talk about its design and development, and we will talk about some of its service life, so without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Originating around 1951 with the T-95 program to replace the M48 patterns that were currently in service with the purpose of combating the Soviet T-54 and T-55 tanks. Although the T-95 program would eventually be scrapped, it worked as a valuable testbed for experimental and innovative components which would later influence the M60's design. Unfortunately for the T-95 program, it didn't show any major advantages over the M48 and so as a result, focus moved towards the XM60 program. Beginning in the late 1950s, the XM60 program, like the T95 program, was designed to combat Soviet tanks of the era. Developed to fulfill the medium tank role and still have enough firepower to negate the need for heavier tanks such as the M103 whilst retaining reasonable armour and high mobility, along with also being cheap enough to produce in large numbers. By 1960, anti-tank weapons had massively outpaced armour development and so heavier armour was no longer capable of defeating incoming rounds without a huge cost to mobility. XM60 prototypes were produced between 1958 and 1959, and the first small batch production of M60s were produced by Chrysler between 1960 and 1962. 180 of these vehicles were produced. The M60 was armed with an M68 105mm gun, which is a license-built version of the L7 gun found on the Centurion Mark X. The first variant of M60, also designated as the M60A0 by many, had the same turret as the M48, but on a newly designed hull, which also included a newly designed commander's cupola. Secondary armaments included a coaxially mounted M73 7.62 machine gun and an M85 50 calibre machine gun in a fully traversable commander's cupola. The M85 machine gun, which was also mounted on the M48 with the capability of being fired from within the crew compartment by the commander with the use of two pull handles, one being to fire and one being to charge the weapon. Early in the production of the M60, upgrades for the vehicle were being developed. In 1962, the M60A1 replaced it in the production line with a new turret design retaining the same 105mm gun as seen on the original M60. Later variants of the A1, such as the AOS or add-on stabilisation, added a gun stabiliser in 1972. The A1 Rise, featuring further improvements on equipment, a hull upgrade featuring a new engine, and then the Rise Plus, adding night vision optics for gunner and commander. And finally, the Rise P, or Passive, which upgraded the coaxially mounted machine gun to the newer M240C, an addition of spool liners to improve crew survivability, another new engine with a folding kit, and ability to mount ERA, or explosive reactive armour. Further variants of US M60 included the M60A2, which mounted a totally new turret with a 152mm gun or launcher capable of firing anti-tank guided missiles and high explosive shells. And finally, the M60A3, which built upon the A1 while adding a laser rangefinder, thermal optics, and a ballistic computer. Variants of M60 served primarily through until the 1990s, with the US pulling it from combat service with the United States Marine Corps after the 1991 Gulf War, where it served alongside M1 Abrams tanks. Much like all tanks, the M60 was also developed into various support vehicles, such as the M88 Armored Recovery Vehicle, which is still in service with the US today. The M60 series of tank is arguably one of the most successful US tank designs in history, comparable in its success to the M4 Sherman from World War II. With over 15,000 produced in all variants, it served in almost every Middle Eastern conflict from 1960. Internationally, Israel was the largest user of M60s with over 1,400 of various models. If you'd like to see an M60 in real life, I recommend you go to the Bovington Tank Museum in Dorset, England, where you can see an operational M60A3. So how does the M60 fare in game? The M60 is a US Rank 5 battle rating 7.7 .7 tank, with a standard modern crew configuration of four, a driver, gunner, loader, and commander. With a top speed of 30 miles per hour on ideal terrain, the M60 is not the most mobile tank at 7.7, .7, but does have more than enough to compete with other medium and main battle tanks. The M60 in-game has very reasonable armour, with an upper front plate of 93mm at a 66 degree slope giving it around an effective thickness of 200mm, a lower front plate of 137mm angled at 55 degrees providing around 300mm of effective thickness at best. The size of the hull only has 70mm of armour meaning that even small calibre projectiles will penetrate you. The front of the turret has between 150 and 100mm of armour at various slope angles. Although not very thick, it will give you the ability to bounce some, but not all, armour-piercing rounds. With regards to the gun mantlet, it's 152mm thick, meaning that at 7.7 .7 it is a serious weak point. With the size of the turret, much like the hull, not being able to stop much more than a 40mm round at 73mm thick. Overall, the M60 in-game fares very well against its adversaries at 7.7 .7 and up to 8.7, with an ability to fire heat FS and APDS, 
it doesn't have too much of an issue killing heavier tanks. With a reload rate of 6.7 seconds on a max crew, the 105mm gun is more than capable of killing other tanks. With decent mobility, it can get to flanks reasonably fast, but due to the lack of a gun stabiliser, you won't be able to use your mobility to its full potential, especially compared with the M60A1 AOS and Rise P that are also in-game. The best strategy that I have found using the M60 is to move to the flanks and snipe. This is due to the lack of gun stabiliser on the basic M60. You will have to stop to engage targets anyway, and so peeking out from behind buildings and over hills is the best option. I recommend loading the M60 with only 30 rounds of heat FS as you will not need any other type of shell since the heat FS rounds have 400mm of penetration. I also recommend that you bring around 3 or 4 smoke rounds just to be able to blind enemies if needed. Although this is more than your 22 round ready rack, I recommend you bring this such ammo to reduce your chances of an ammunition cook-off and maintain your fighting capability. By no means is the M60 one of the easiest tanks in game to use, however with practice it can be used very effectively. After putting a couple hundred hours into this tank, I've finally managed to get it to a point where I enjoy using it. This tank is more than capable at 7.7, .7. even at 8.7 battle rating games, generally with 400mm of penetration from Heat FS, you are more than capable of fighting other vehicles. Just before we end here guys, I'd like to thank Golden for helping me get some of this footage together, he's uh, seen in the M1 Abrams and the M103. And anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video, if there's anything you'd like to see in the future, please leave it in the comment section below, please like and subscribe, and thank you all very much for watching.